There's no lower third. Colton? What is up, ladies and gentlemen and everything else? We have got a fantastic WAN show lined up for you today. Lots of great topics. The one and only Greg Salazar has done a video on overkill computers. More like overpriced computers. Yeah. Boom. Got them. Yeah. Roasted. roasted. Uh, in other news, Discord is now on the Xbox if you're into mild hassles. So that's great. That's... Good for you, Xbox. Welcome to the year. Man, when did we get like voice chat on PC? PC like PC. <laughs> when did Vent? Really come a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, good for you. What else we got? Yeah, Whale Land tickets are live. All the actual whale tickets were gone like immediately, but you can still get bring your own computer tickets. So check it out. Buy them. Be there. It's gonna be fun. Should be good. Um, and also, people have put firearms on top of robot dogs. And a lot of people are scared. Yeah, we'll we'll talk. About they could have done it a lot better, to be honest. They did a really bad job. But yeah, well, that, yeah. That, you can analyze it later. You analyze it later. For now, we're gonna roll that intro. <laughs> Our regular producer is not here, guys. It's Colt. It's Colt. The show is brought to you by Corsair, Zoho Desk, and Polyarc. Oh, that is the wrong lower third. Yeah. That's actually a problem. This could be a problem. Hey! Yay! <laughs> I did it. We need our merch messages to work. So recap for those of you who are new to the show. We do not look at super chats or any other kinds of uh, yeah, Twitch bits or whatever. Uh, you go, you shop on LTTstore.com. And if we're live, you can leave a merch message in the checkout. And it'll either pop up at the bottom or our producer, who is Colton today, will respond to your message via text. Or we will address it on the show. That is the way to send messages. And we're going to jump right into our first topic which i have not prepped on at all because let's face it this is the wan show what else were you expecting yeah really tiktoker circuit board makes videos where he rates pre-builds and he created several videos where he called out overkill computers for their brutally overpriced systems now there are examples in the doc here but i would actually rather experience it for myself nice, so i'm gonna head like over it. to overkillcomputers.com Overkill. Now offering financing. Well, you probably would need to do that. Well, you? okay. I mean, lots of places have financing. I actually still remember when a friend of mine in high school, Ty, if you're watching, don't get don't get upset about this. Friend of mine in high school financed a computer. Like like remember those dollar a day computers from Dell? No, actually. One dollar. You guys, you guys don't remember. You guys don't remember any of that. I, maybe it wasn't Dell. Whatever. It was some financing deal where it was like a dollar a day. And he's like, "Yeah, it's like it's like no money down." I'm like, "Dude, it's like it was a lot of money. I forget how much money it was, but to me, a high schooler, it was an unfathomable amount of money to spend on a computer. We're talking like hundreds of actual dollars, okay? And um, th that's my whole story. Financing computers is stupid." <laughs> Because by the time he actually paid that piece of shit off, it was like completely worthless. And if he had just saved up and bought what he could afford, then he would have actually ended up ahead of the game. That, that, was, that was my whole thing. Anyway, let's go back to overkillcomputers.com. The Rampage Stealth, now available. The Project Rampage Official, the Orion Official, the Frostbite. Well, I think I'm going to check out the Whiteout. This looks like a pretty normal computer, but whiter. Uh, okay. Hello. Learn more. Here we go. Now, okay. More financing. What, who do you think you are? Dell? These have cool names. They do have cool names. Yeah. Wait, what happened to the one I clicked on? Where is it? Blizzard Project of... Wait, what, what is all this stuff? Wait, Frostbite? Is that the one? What did I click on? This is $6,540. Now, hold on just a gosh darn minute here. Frostbite build. What is, what is this? What is... Are, are these individual... Are these individual systems? Or are these like actual actual like series of things a thing you can buy when you order this computer wait it has a why does it have an 11th gen processor hold, hold on a second this is an 11900k for 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 six thousand five hundred dollars 
Okay, that is an expensive motherboard. There's only one option for GP. What even is this? Their configurator, oh, okay. Some stuff has options. NV1, I think you mean NVMe? Kingston, what is a Kingston NV1? Look, to be clear, your PC Builder site is better than my PC Builder site. Okay, NV1 is apparently an actual thing. Substantial performance upgrade in high capacity. Hmm. Efficient performance for thinner notebooks and systems. That doesn't seem like the default SSD of this particular system. Do you just only have like three SSDs in stock? Is that the problem? I kind of feel like that's what's going on looking through this configurator myself. I don't understand what's happening. We will be filming some of the, some of these builds. No, there's only one of these builds. What are you even talking about? Okay. I mean the the video is pretty cool. Is that is that the that doesn't look like that, does it? No, it doesn't. Or does it? I can't tell what I'm looking at. Is this the same computer? <laughs> I think it might be. I'm actually not sure. The colors keep changing. Okay, maybe there are different ones then. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Business inquiries? Powered by Typeform. Work with Overkill. If this is for marketing and business requests, okay, they have merch. Uh, ready to game. Shop now. Uh, wait, oh, okay. We're back on the, okay. We're back on the computers page. So... All right. I think we've had a bit of an experience on the over. To be fair, and I have. Hey, what I happened have... to Project Orion? Where'd it go? It's not even here. What is Project Unknown? Ten thousand dollars. What does that even mean? This build isn't for the faint of heart. We take your design ideas and create something truly custom. It can be water cooled or air cooled. You decide. Wait, what? The, what? The, you just give them ten grand and you hope they give you something good? We will custom badge your PC one out of one. I should just, I should, oh man, I'm sorry we've talked about it on WAN show now because I should have just bought one. Should just bought one? Yeah, that would have been kind of amazing actually. Huh, okay, well. There's a, did you see the custom request form? I didn't. Wanna, uh, is it on your screen? It's on my screen, okay, yeah. I'll screen share you. There's a custom request form, unleash the beast, customize yours, get your gaming PC now. This form is reserved for only the most serious customers. There's a minimum budget of five grand for these builds. Due to overwhelming requests, we charge $45 to verify the form submission. What? This is not refundable, but will apply towards your build if you go forward with one. This is only to hold your place in line. It does not guarantee instant acceptance into the custom build program. Okay. Well, I mean, it's not entirely unreasonable to take a deposit on a bespoke computer. Yeah. But that... they have no examples of what they're going to build. Like, where's the gallery? Of their, like, previous builds. Yeah, yeah that their would previous be... custom ones. Like, what makes it so cool. custom? I don't know. Yeah, because, like, how, mu how much would creating, like, a custom hardline water cooling system cost? I mean, we could, we could, um, we could price these out at other places that do them. I mean, Main Gear does. Sure. Yeah. Let's so do here, that. I'm, I'm gonna head over to main gear because, like, looking at the site, this doesn't look like they're trying to position themselves as like a uh, a, a price competitor for for parts. It, it looks like like with their with the names of things and the and the the photos that they're choosing and whatnot. It sounds like they're trying to be like the we are a fancy builder, you know? Yeah, which is fair enough. Um, there's. I do also like that their their links at the bottom goes to the team, financing, and then gaming PCs. Okay. Just Main like how Gear. when you first land on their website, the first thing you see is financing, not anything to do with computers. Main Gear is not looking too great here either. Uh, That's what I'm talking about. Like if you're gonna put the I time to into customize this. If you're <laughs> I like I don't know about that part. What just happened? No, that's not what I <laughs> But like it, this is not a quick ship. I wanted to customize it. If you want your computer built in North America. Um, sure. and you want it built with like custom hardline water cooling and all this other kind of stuff. Like it's costs are going to ramp up really quick. Okay. Well here, let's select, we'll go to, for the rush, right? That looks pretty like, you know, whatever. Uh, okay. So here, okay. Apex custom. How much was the one we just looked at? Like $5,500? The, the frost one or whatever. Yeah. That one. Yeah. Uh, let me verify frostbite official. Okay. So here, let's put some hellcat Wait, red. What, up you in here. click on it. And it doesn't, where did it go? Okay, integrated with soft tubing. Okay, hardline tubing from 
uh, from Main Gear apparently will run you fifteen hundred dollars on That's your bill. That's what I'm saying. So like the notes in the dock are like, oh, so the bill fee is like a thousand dollars, and it's like, okay, they have a bunch of different computers on here, but if you're getting builds that have hardline water cooling and all this other kind of stuff, like mm-hmm. this is major. It's going to cost a lot. Project Frostbite is sixty five forty. Sixty five forty. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's see what kind of spec I can get for that kind of a budget. Uh, does Project Frostbite have a custom like automotive finish or whatever? Uh, Wait, do I have to select a fancy paint job, or can I just not? I mean, if you're spending that much, like uh, chameleon pearl, multiple colors. Now, hold on a second. It. I mean, that sounds amazing. What if I don't want that? What if I wait? Hold on. Can I not unselect the paint job? Not to toot main gear either. Gosh darn it! But main like, gear. if if I was spending that type of cash, I would want to go with a company that I knew had a good pedigree and reputation and main gear like does so yeah i don't know right now their site is kind of a uh, a burr under my saddle oh clear selection there it is okay so i don't don't need the automotive paint paint, but i am gonna go with the hardline cooling i also have the ability to add custom paint jobs with graphics and custom themes this will add cost okay so it's not included yeah okay processor okay Main Gear's got a bit of a problem here, too, because this was also a system that started at, like, many thousands of dollars and out of the box had a 5600X <laughs> as the CPU. Uh, that is what we should call we, should in the we business spec equalize? suboptimal. Uh, well, no, we can't, because for whatever reason, Overkill parts. has an 11th gen. Yeah. So I don't know what's up with Yeah, this has 16 gigs of... Now, hold just a gosh darn minute here, Main Gear. What is the what is the default configuration? Forty four hundred dollars for the Apex Rush that does not have fancy. Apparently, uh, paint. Overkill doesn't have a warranty. Ooh. Oh really? Uh, that's also Where do you suboptimal. See that? So hold on a second. It does come with water cooling, but it's soft tubing. Okay, includes RGB fans, cools both CPU and GPU. Comes with a thirty eighty. Okay. If I put a decent CPU in here, something comparable, let's put a 5900X. To be clear, I'm not I'm not like trashing on people who have a CPU that isn't a 5900X, okay? That, I'm just saying, at this price tier, you should have a 5900X. That's all I'm saying. I'm going to put 64 gigs of Fury Renegade RGB memory in here. We'll throw a, I mean, you need a 1200 watt power supply. You're going to spend this kind of money, right? Like, come on. Uh, NVMe Deep. SSD... Wow, it comes with a 512 gig SSD by default. We're going to go two terabytes, 670, actually. So you want their default to be cranked up more. Now, just a gosh darn minute. Are they charging $550 for a Samsung 980 Pro? Does that seem right? Does that seem right? I I mean, you know, I I don't shop for SSDs often. But does that seem right? That doesn't seem right. You know, you know what I'm saying, Luke? Mm-hmm. Does it seem right? No. Two forty nine ninety nine is what that two terabyte nine eighty Pro is going to cost you, and Main Gear wants more than that to upgrade to. Wait, no, hold on. What? Now I'm really confused. What happened here? No, 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 no. That is over the default one here, right? Yes. I, I think Overkill Computers really does have a warranty, by the way. Because if I select this one here, this shouldn't say plus 297, right? That's over top of this one, if you look at how the number is changing. Either way, either way, $297 as an upcharge over a 512 gig 670p. Hold on just a gosh darn minute. 670p... Uh, 512. How much is one of those going to run you? 50 bucks. So that's that's a solid $100 of margin for upgrading your SSD. Man, Colton, is it finally happening? Are we going to start an SI? We could. I had some ideas. I sent them to Linus. But I, 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 there's some, I think there's some actually pretty cool things we could do. We're not doing it. Not now. No, <laughs> no we're not doing the it. The cool idea, I don't know if it makes actual sense it doesn't right doesn't now make this yeah luke unfortunately luke. luke we'll see dude luke what, what what are you gonna do in 10 years huh what am i gonna do in 10 years? not build computers all day well it's been well not you well the company 
It's been ten years so far. If 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 it, do you think ten years ago you would have said we'd have a lab? No. Yeah. So never say never. Dash Justin Bieber. Um. Okay. So what are what are your specs? Do you have sixty four gigs or thirty two gigs of RAM? Okay. Let me jump back to it. I was looking through the warranty. I I think some people are are. It's written oddly, but I I think they have a parts and labor warranty for one year. There's okay. some weird stuff where you have to cover half the shipping cost and some other things and stuff. And if you live outside of the U.S., you don't have a warranty and blah, blah, blah. Okay. But no. I think there's stuff. But okay, jump me back to the computer. Yeah. Uh, RAM, 32 gigs. 32 gigs. All Four right. eight gig dims. <sighs> okay, I've got two by 16 because yeah, like, I'm not an idiot Yeah. because I'm main gear. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. All right, I'm at 48.69. I have a 5900X. Here, I'm just going to come back to the screen here. I have a 5900X. I have uh, 32 gigs of RAM. GPU. I have a, a 3080, which I believe is okay, the same. We, we both have 3080s. But what I don't have... Yeah, wait, sorry. You have a 5900X? Yeah. Okay. I also have a 5900X. Okay. What I don't have is hardline cooling. As soon as I select hardline cooling, I'm at 6369. Yeah. So they're extremely similarly priced. Okay. Yeah, so this this is a 5900X with an RG X570. I'm coming over to your screen. Yep. Yeah, 5900X, RG X570, uh, 3080, one terabyte, NV1. The the really stupid choice of eight or four separate sticks of eight gig dims, um, and it's 6500. Okay. What case is yours in? Is it in like a main gear custom? Uh, I don't know what it's in. Some case. Lee and Leo 11 Dynamic XL. That's the... This is a Lee and Leo 11 Dynamic, not XL. Well, mine is XL. Wow. Yeah. That's a win. I bet you feel inadequate. Insufficient. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I I don't know. Hard light water cooling is super expensive. That's my like main takeaway. Um, And I can actually give you guys some background for why that would be. I think that a lot of you are probably looking at this going, man, Linus, you should get into the system integrator business because you could bring hardline water cooling to the people at an affordable... No, 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 no. It's not an affordable thing to do. There is so much hassle involved in water cooling computers for customers. And And what shipping them? And I can tell you that anyone who's been doing it as long as Main Gear has learned a lesson from some time that they tried to get all price competitive about hardline water cooling and then realized that the cost of it is not just the cost of the parts and the labor. The cost of it is the cost of the parts and the labor and supporting the bloody thing when some butthead who can't build their own hardline water cooling system wants to perform maintenance on a hardline water cooling system and expects you to sit on the phone with them for four hours and walk you through it. That's the problem. Supporting water cooled systems is horrible. Um, Joffred says, how is paying $1,500 for hardline justified? That well, could pay for 40 hours of some rando to do it. If I can if I can interject here, Cave Johnson on Floatplane. Yeah, uh, uh, what you're referring to as Linux is actually... Sorry, go ahead. Cave Johnson on Floatplane uh, says, specking out the water cooling parts from EK's configurator brings the cost of just the hardline cooling without assembly to $1,200. Yeah, so hardline components are super expensive. So if you want to know who's actually making the margin in water cooling... That would be the EKs of the world. You know, when you're when you're spending, I remember back when fancy fittings first started to really take off. I was the I was the product manager for Bits Power, who was really the the OG fancy special, yeah. all different finishes. I I would I looked at their product catalog. I'm like, who needs this many different colors of fitting? Why do we need a yeah, shiny black to, and a matte black like... and a diamond black? What are, they're, they're they're black, right? Nope. So we carried only a small subset of what they had because it just wasn't it wasn't scalable. It wasn't feasible. But man, when you're making like eight dollars a fitting or whatever, or charging like eight dollars a fitting, whew, it adds up real, real fast. They're more expensive my than friends. that now. So let's go back with that in mind. With that, overkill computers aside from being clearly a much smaller outfit. Oh, um, not really. 
with it in mind that overkill computers is actually not that far off what someone like a main gear is charging for a system like that. Let's go back to our notes here. This was prepared by Alex. So TikToker circuit board um, rates prebuilt and made several videos calling out overkill computers for their brutally overpriced systems. For instance, they are selling a system for $2724, $2,724. Okay, let me try to find this system. With an R7 5800X, RTX 3070, and an ASRock B550 motherboard. So Greg Salazar went through PC Part Picker for the same parts and got a price of a whopping $1,000 less. So that's, that's $1,000 of, of build fee. Now, it could just be that Luke and I happened to find the one system that was competitively priced. Definitely possible. And happened to compare it to one of, if not the most expensive boutique builders. Also a thing that happened. But I mean, also a thing that it was happened. a hardline system. There, There isn't, a, uh, at least the last time I checked, there wasn't a ton of them that did hardline systems. No, there's not a ton because it's a nightmare. It's Whereas, horrifying. If we're just looking at a system that is not hardline water-cooled, that's a problem. Do you want to try and find that? 2724? You, you found screen. it. All right, yep. let's have a look. Is it the as blizzard. bad as we think? Oh boy, that's an AIO. That is an AIO. Everything here is is kind of a pre-pack. I don't know if that uh, power supply has some extensions on it to get those white cables with combs, um, but that's yeah. not like... Those are not that expensive. No, and the case is handling your, your cable management, which is what actually yep. looks really good. This is not a... Primo. If, if, if I'm, I'm assuming... Greg Salazar is a fantastic dude. I'm assuming what he did is accurate. So if this is a thousand bucks over, which like it looks like it would be, um, because holy crap, this should not be twenty seven hundred dollars. Then yeah, it's way massively overpriced. I'm wondering if yeah. this has not reflected any price changes from mm. when prices were all cranked up. Yeah, because it seems like rather than these systems being series of systems that they build, it seems like this is just the system that Buddy made. And if you want him to recreate that exact system, then yeah. he'll build it for you, which is like um, not that clever of a business strategy. But As I'm also kind of assuming this isn't their bread and butter. Well, I, I have no idea what their bread and butter would be. I even think their bread be. and butter is finances. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, I. I don't know. This is this is pretty brutally priced, hundred percent. And and I and I'm rather certain we could shop around and find way better offers. Now, overpriced computer, excuse me, overkill computers <laughs> charging a lot for their computers is not really the topic today. What happened was overkill computers responded to circuit boards correct reporting on the <laughs> pricing and said, this was Overkill's creative director over on Instagram, have fun with your 20,000 view videos from now on, brother. I wish you all well, and I'm not threatening you in the slightest. I feel bad for your situation. Let me know if I can do anything to help you out. Heart emoji. Holy crap, that's cringe. <laughs> I hadn't Excuse actually, me, I hadn't read or brother? heard that yet. I, I, brother in Christ? <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. I I had not, wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is part of the like, we don't really read the topics too much before the show starts. <laughs> I had not heard that. That's crazy. <laughs> yep. oh. Chat was like, this topic's kind of boring. We should move on. Yeah, we get the quote from <laughs> throwing in I'm not threatening you and ending it with a heart is just feel like bad for your situation. Wow. What are you even talking about? Oh my goodness. Wow. So then ex employees and customers of Overkill then began reaching out to add a bit of spice to the story. We gotta sprinkle this with some allegedly's here. Okay, so here's a Here's Some a major alleged ample lease. helping. Let me just take a swig of allegedly from this from patriotic Canada bottle. red and white Canada water bottle, lttstore.com, available in two different sizes. Oh my goodness. Customers that purchased computers sometimes allegedly had to wait over six months to get their system. Also, some nice. customers that had already waited months apparently received emails saying that the GPU they'd ordered was no longer available and they would have to pay an additional $400 to put a GPU in their system. <laughs> So this might be just because Overkill is an extremely small outfit that simply has absolutely no actual stock, no relationships with vendors. Yep. The customer also had to sign a confidentiality agreement 
allegedly, which is, yeah, the face he's making. That's how I feel about it. <laughs> if I ever have to sign a confidentiality agreement to buy a computer, it better be like from NASA. Yeah. Yeah. NASA or computer. Or like Intel and every part, or, or at least some part in it is like never released or something. Yeah. And then I will enthusiastically sign that. Yeah. If, if I'm just buying it from a random store and they're like, here, sign an NDA, uh, I'm just not going to do Overkill business there. Overkill also allegedly requires employees to sign NDAs, even though they're an SI. And I doubt they have many proprietary things on the go. I actually disagree with that take. No, yeah. Uh, any company, you're going to have an NDA for your employees, even if it's as simple as like, okay. What if you're uh, dealing with customer yeah, data? Yeah. In our NDA, we have a non-disclosure clause in our employee agreement that says you can't disclose personal information about your colleagues. Yeah. That's just, that's just basic. It's common decency. If you're, if you're one of the computer builders, your ticket will yeah. probably come in with the customer's name on it. Like, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. No, that, that, that makes perfect sense to me. Apparently though, there are some content creators that are going to court with overkill regarding a sponsorship contract. We have very few details about that. Although they do have a Patreon allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. where they have members only PC giveaways, allegedly, which at least, uh, according to Canadian laws, I have no idea how this works in America. According to Canadian laws is illegal. That constitutes a lottery. And uh, yeah, so these are, oh, okay. Yeah, here it is. Mem entries to members only computer giveaways. We will giving a, be giving away one per month. They are an American company. I don't know what the rules are for that. I have no idea what their lottery laws are, but up here in order to run a giveaway and have it not be a lottery, which would be mean that you're under a completely different set of much, much more stringent laws. Um, there has to be a no purchase necessary way to enter. So yeah, I have a hard time imagining why you have a like Patreon for a system integrator, but um, some people anyway. in full plane chat are saying that that's how it works in most states. So Overkill then sent Circuit Board a cease and desist, alleging that he was defamatory toward the company, requesting all videos about them to be deleted and all comments about them removed. Well, gee. I can tell you how I feel about threatening members of the media, who is basically anyone with a phone and a TikTok account at this point, I suppose. Yep, yep. It ain't cool. Tell you what, Overkill. I think your pricing sucks on that system too. Yeah, buddy or br uh, brother. <laughs> you want my address? You want to know where to address the cease and desist? You can find it on Google. Because I could use some free toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually much rather not wipe my butt with, um, like... It'd like be a, uncomfortable. Yeah, you could get a paper cut in a really awful place. Yeah. Like, I'd imagine it would have an, a horrible time healing with all the bacteria and everything. Like, it just seems like a pretty bad time. Yeah, not, but, not good. Uh, anyway, this quote is a little long, but worth it. Overkill CEO, trying to do his best to turn a molehill into artesian builds, then <laughs> went on TikTok to say things like, we get a lot of views and therefore have some haters. We also have some past employees with opinions on what we do. And unfortunately, we have one employee who has made it his mission to defame overkill computers. And to those people, I say, what you're doing in darkness will soon come to light. And as a Marine vet, I have a lot more respect for people who aren't cowards. Okay. What? Uh, okay. Is this sniper? Over 900 confirmed kills? Uh, Speed and accuracy that has never been seen before. Okay. On the topic of prices, Overkill CEO said, we don't and will not ever place ourselves at the lowest profit margin. As a matter of fact, we sometimes raise our prices to slow the number of orders coming through. I've never heard of these guys. How are there so many system integrators that I have never even heard of? I don't know. I haven't heard of them either. That is a, that is a fairly standard tactic, though. Like, if you are... I don't think it means adding $1,000 onto a, like, not... A very fantastic system but like if, if you have too many orders coming in it yeah, is fairly no, standard practice for enough. businesses to I, raise your price i just mean i doubt that yeah um it is a simple case of supply and demand the people that keep saying we need to do pc builds for 300 dollars profit they can get a computer somewhere else or maybe learn how to build their own gaming pc they can do that by yeah. the way uh, yeah. there's a great channel um gamers tech tips or gamers nexus bit tips jay's two cents jay's two greg salazar uh, well whatever there's lots of options that's the point <laughs> they went and for a time, I may move in silence and put chess pieces in place. Wow. But you can rest assured. This sounds sick. If you threaten my business, 
my family and my livelihood. I will utilize every will resource at, at my disposal <laughs> to arrange a coordinated and effective response. That wraps it up. <laughs> Let's go. I'd watch this movie, dude. This is the movie taken. I'd watch this movie. <laughs> I'm in. Oh, the sheer volume of cringe is just wow. overwhelming. Oh. This is great. This is great. Look at this. This is terrific. There's a Dag Dagath Ur quote. What grand and intoxicating innocence. Oh, look at this. I love it. Can, can you just stop? Why you gotta like why you gotta why you gotta be like that, you know? So anyway, um maybe maybe we can await our coordinated and effective response. So I think we've got a pretty balanced take here. Compared to other system integrators who build expensive systems, um, their website could use some work, but their but pricing so the on other ones. the super overkill stuff does not seem any more out to lunch. Um, with that said, there's probably some systems that have pricing that is pretty high, and um, it's well within the right of anyone in the media to have that opinion and express it, and threatening those people is stupid. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Mm -hmm. So you you went and you had a, a not bad situation and you turned it into a really bad situation. I would say your next hire, if you're selling so many systems that you have to raise your prices to slow the orders, should probably be someone in like PR. Marcom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You need to stop communicating to customers. Yeah, or, that would or be cool. media or anyone else. Yeah, because you cannot handle it. Yeah, you you should. You're you're taking it real personal, and it's just business. So, um, this also yeah. would have like just as a as a thing for anyone else watching. This honestly, as bad as it sounds, could have been very easy to handle in a relatively positive way. Um, you could talk about how because it seems like this. To be fair. Their whole name is Overkill Computers. They're probably not focused as a company on mid-range computers, right? Mm -hmm. So if I was them, I would just talk about how like our, our passion and our focus as a company is the things that they're putting out there mostly. Like if you go to their gaming PCs tab, the thing right next to the giant financing word yeah. uh, is this is this crazy looking computer with sure. cool water line or hardline water tubing looks pretty that, overkill. that looks pretty overkill and is probably too hard for a lot of people to make and if you're like yeah this is our focus sometimes we let old builds sit there and gpu prices were really expensive for a while so things were cranked up and yeah it is what it is they could have just said you know our bad yeah we had some outdated builds on the site would have blown over yeah immediately yeah uh, apparently, there are free entries on Gleam for the PC giveaways. Okay, uh, this cool. is according to Dawson J six twenty one in chat. I have no, I haven't validated that. Yeah, and again, a lot of the details are allegedly the main thing here is that is a very not good way to respond. Yeah, yeah, it's a bad way to respond. The so. responses are the main things we're talking about. Yeah, Alex's discussion questions are hilarious. Um, Bullying creators for reporting on your product is obviously wrong. Maybe compare to Intel's response when we crapped on Arc. Yeah, man, they pulled out all the stops. They listened to us. They fixed things. They responded to us, not just not just by email, by flying up here and bringing us a demo of the card working better. Uh, that is how you deal with negative coverage um that was like a lesson in how to deal with negative coverage and it, it turns the story around into a super positive thing right like oh, if they were just like yeah honestly that's just outdated and our focus is these like six systems you can turn it into a showcase of your cool systems and now there's more people talking about your store like you could have turned this into a major sales opportunity and growth opportunity but instead um you just kind of look like a baby well, I'm glad you said it and not me because uh, I think you're like a little better able to handle the coordinated and <laughs> the coordinated response. strike. <laughs> <laughs> All right, why don't we move on to our next topic? What else did I say we would talk about today? Ah, yes, Discord on the Xbox. If you're into a mild hassle, uh, this was originally reported, at least the articles that we're using from by Ars Technica and IGN, and it's happened. The first console to finally natively integrate Discord is the Xbox. Owners of Xbox One and Series, 
consoles will be able to connect with their friends through Discord voice chat on the systems themselves. Now, we actually tried to do this like six months ago or something like that. Yeah, because I it's quite a while ago. I'm pretty sure I've heard talk about discord on consoles for a while we had the xbox in like the dev mode that allows you to run emulators and other and we tried uh, to run discord in a browser okay or something like that yeah, but yeah. the problem was that the browser didn't have access to the audio devices blah 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 we sure. didn't manage we got the app working in the browser but we did not manage to actually make a voice call yeah um, but now it's there. The option is available to Xbox Insider users and calls must be initiated and handed off from a smartphone with many annoying steps through both the Discord app and the Xbox app. That's wacky. Hmm. At least you can do it. It's a little yeah. wacky. But, you yeah. got to transfer over to your Xbox. So, I just, so, okay, so I call you on my phone. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I, I, there, there's a note in here that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Uh, or, or, or that is very interesting. And, and I talked about Discord. On, I was like, yeah, we talked about Discord on consoles. Uh, Discord walked away from a Microsoft attempt to purchase them for $10 billion. Allegedly. Last year, allegedly, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where I had that in my head from. So yeah, I guess it wasn't on there previously. It's just that they wanted to buy them. It's weird that last year, Sony bought a minority stake in Discord and said we'd see the fruits of their collaboration early this year. Uh, it looks like they lost the race, unless maybe there's like a much better app coming on PlayStation. Yeah, maybe you don't have to call them first on your yeah, phone. Yeah, require you to call on their phone. Either way, this is this is absolutely it's good. a step in the right direction. Yeah. But I think Jonathan Horst's discussion question kind of hits the nail on the head. Why aren't there just APIs that allow the Xbox and PlayStation to support third-party chat applications like, you know, already, like ages ago? They're just computers, bro. Yeah, to be fair, up, be up until sensitive. the last like two or three years, I probably wouldn't have considered it as a console manufacturer. Why? Uh, there's very and why now? There was very little cross platform. Okay, so right. you're just playing with other Xbox people or other PlayStation people. Sure, cross platform is much more a more recent thing. Um, we've been talking about it for a super long time, but it actually hitting like big popularity and actually being a thing that people are very actively doing right. is quite more recent. Like this critical, critical mass kind of. Yeah. And, and they actually had pretty good voice chat. Like I remember voice chat back in, you can meme about what the lobbies were like. Um, uh, but I remember voice chat back in like, uh, Xbox 360 days was quite functional. And like, if you had the actually good headset, like it worked pretty well, like they right. had their own thing going. Um, and I, I bet you, in a way, for some people in the company, uh, allowing access to things that isn't their own voice chat was probably seen as like somewhat of a, a forfeiture of that. That ecosystem. Yeah. That, uh, which is just a nice word for walled garden. Yeah. Uh, that they... Yeah. But, and like, I think this is the right move, but it might not have been the most comfortable thing for some people. To yeah. Do. I guess it also means that you're losing some control over the experience users are having on your platform. Yeah. Like if you have, you know, you look at uh, games, for example, will sometimes have a message that pops up if you enable voice chat and online play that'll be like, yeah, the SRB rating for this is kind of out the door as soon as you're interacting with other users because we can't control if they're going to talk about, you know, dildos or whatever. Like, sure. So, okay, <laughs> all right, I guess I, yeah, and like this, I get it. This might also, like if I if I was a, a, I don't know what this job title would be, but I'm sure it's a thing. If it was like a, a game and community experience person at Xbox, um, I might be concerned about a reduction in actual voice chat activity uh, because there's, I'm assuming this can run in the background while you play other games because yeah. it sort of has to. So I, I think this would increase the amount of people that would just sit in lobbies with other people, their friends, um, while playing other games and not joining the like native voice chat for games if they're playing multiplayer games. So that might reduce the usage of voice chat in games, which might be a positive in regards to the whole rating thing you were just talking about, uh, but might be a negative in regards to engagement and sure. stuff like that. Quantum Rand says there are APIs. This is over in Floatplane Chat. Uh, Super Mario Odyssey multiplayer mod has actually implemented them for proximity voice chat. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't think that's really what 
And apparently, Xbox me. apps have full access to the Windows UWP APIs, and the problem is that Discord and most chat apps were made primarily as browser apps and not native apps. This is Zorg666 in Floatplane Chat. So there's yes. a little more to it than we thought, yeah. but it's clear that there just wasn't a focus on this. And I think, Luke, you're probably right that that was down to the lack of demand due to the lack of cross-play apps. And if you have just a native chat app, well, what? why do you need a, a separate one? I remember actually feeling like that when my group and I used to play Left 4 Dead all the time. I was like, oh, the game has kind of built-in chat. Why do we bother with this mumble server? And then we like would play other games. I'd be like, oh, oh yeah, okay, okay, we need it. Yeah. yeah also, the yeah. quality was better. The latency was lower, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. um, I can definitely see that perspective. Okay, we already have a perfectly working solution. Do we really need another one? The answer is yes, apparently. So that's good. Uh, we should probably do a couple merch messages. Colton, you got anything lined up for us? He's he's a little he's new slow. to this. Colton? All right, Colton. I'm here. I'm here. Colton. So Austin asks, "What are your biggest concerns about the 40 series cards from Nvidia?" I mean, um, people putting them in cases that were not designed to dissipate, you know, 400, 450, 500 watts of GPU. I've been thinking about this. It's pa. A lot of these like tempered glass everywhere cases are gonna have some troubles. Uh, yeah, we how, actually need like more old school style. I was going to say, how ironic would that be if you can't have like a last generation case, but you're fine as long as you have a brand new one or an ancient one. <laughs> like you pull yeah. out your your CM. What what's the? Here, if you go back to those cases with the huge like 300 mil. Here here here, I got one. I got one side for you. Fans. I got one for you, buddy. How about you pull out the Stacker yeah. 830? Look at this boy. <laughs> yeah. Look at this boy. <laughs> it's got some cooling. Yeah, because there was there was a while there in like case design where it was yeah. very fashionable to just have as many fan slots as you could possibly yeah. have. Yeah. This was like pre-tempered glass. This was actually kind of, in my opinion, a, a dark age of case design. But <laughs> that's absolutely but, my biggest concern though. Oh, yeah. And there's going to be a lot of people. Man, we should probably do an updated how to water cool your GPU video. The last time we did that, we were still working out of the Langley house. So that was like seven, eight years ago. And I think this generation, there's going to be a lot more people water cooling their GPU because there's just, there's, it's infeasible to, to, to cool that kind of that kind of power output in that kind of a form factor. I, I think we're also going to see a lot of systems damaged in shipping because you're going to have these crazy heavy mm. GPUs. You're going to have some system integrators or even just end users you know, who are moving or something, you know, try to ship it to themselves and it's going to rip the PCI Express slot off Get the motherboard, right? Get that graphics card out of there. Move with it separately. Colton. Come on. I swear, Sorry about he's that. really Sorry about good that. at other stuff. I got it, I got it, I got it. All I right. swear. Peter says, hi, Linus and Luke. I'm curious if you're considering making LMG's AutoBench program open source. It would be great to allow for the community to use and contribute to the program. Love the show. Right now, that is not the plan. Uh, right now, the lab is going to be quite literally an eight-figure investment by the time we are done building it. Um, I intend for that eight-figure investment to be a competitive advantage for our technology analysis. With that said, in the longer term, that is not impossible. And I We've talked about it. And I think that a, a sensible approach could be something along the lines of uh, free for personal use, but a license fee for commercial use or something like that. Logo splatter. But for us to get to that point, we would need we we <laughs> there's a lot of work to do it's it's not ready to be uh it's not ready for prime time it's not ready to be out there it still requires the developer to brief the writers on how to use it like it's there's no documentation there's it doesn't even have a gui yet so um there's a lot of stuff for us to figure out it's also it's such... coming really fast he like he's barely even been at the company yeah he's not even off probation yet yeah. and it's already functioning like it's, yeah like it's, it's great yeah, yeah great yeah. job like the yeah. labs team is going they're, they're yeah. going hard but that doesn't mean that it's like a finished product ready for us to package up and sell it's also a low priority for us priority number one is having the lab functioning uh, then we're going to start figuring out, okay, you know, what's our go-to-market strategy for this what do you tool? Do or with this, these things? How do yeah. we document these processes? Because I do understand that a 
a critical, critical component of this type of analysis is that we publish our methodologies. Because if we don't publish our methodologies, then how can you trust them? But GPU Bench, for example, or whatever we're calling it, AutoBench, AutoBench, I, I don't know. It's, we'll find some name if we Auto ever Bench, actually commercialize it. We'll find some name that's not already taken. So whatever it is we're calling it, um, if that ends up becoming a, a product at some point, well, it's not really it's not really something that people need to see the code for in order to replicate our results. It'll just take longer because all it does is run benchmarks that are already accessible to you or to you or to me, uh, but it does them automatically. So uh, it's not it's not like some of our other tools where yeah, we're going to disclose exactly what microphones and exactly what what fake head thing we're going to use to test headphones so that our results can be validated it's by also, independent third parties. It's but, also it also works in like a pretty specific way um where it's designed to like output things into a specific database that works with Grafana and like all this other type of stuff. Like that's probably not what someone would want uh for like a just take it home and do it yourself like average user type situation. Um, so, yeah. We also don't want to support it. Um, yeah. Good question in the float plane chat though. Alon asks, uh, what are the lab's KPIs from your perspective? What would you call a success and what would you call a failure? I laid this out pretty well on the forum. Um, I mean, I, I have no idea if I'm actually even going to be able to find this post, unfortunately. But, um. No, I can't really find it, but I, I pretty much laid out everything that I expect from the lab. Uh, obviously, I would like a return on the investment in the long term, but that can come in a lot of different forms. It could come in the form of affiliate revenues. It could come in the form of uh, video content for LTT. It could come in the form of video content for other channels. For now, I think Gary probably put it best when we had him on the show to introduce our, our head of the lab. Um, and what he said was, uh, our goal is to not be questioned. So I would like to elaborate on that a little bit. We absolutely want to be questioned. But when the questioning is done, we want people to come away saying, well, that was satisfactory. To not right? be questioned is not very scientific. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, but I understand what he meant. Yeah. And I think his heart was absolutely totally. in the right place. That yeah, our yeah. goal is to build trust to the point where you should still question us, but you might not feel like you have to at a certain point. That's that's what we want to do. All right. Uh, okay, Colton, you're, you're you're typing as me in the float plane chat. What's going on here? You're you're. Can yeah, you can uh, ask, ask more, more questions. questions. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> Shadow says, can't wait to try the shorts. I've loved every product I've gotten from y'all. What product other than the socks are you most excited to be working on? The socks are going to be big. If we ever make them. Um, I'm very excited about our cable management product. That's one of those ones where for screwdrivers, there was already a pretty good screwdriver that I really liked. I just felt we could do it better. For backpack, same thing. There were backpacks that were perfectly usable for me. I just felt we could do it better. Um, with cable management, cable management sucks. Like it just sucks. All of it sucks. No offense. You make cable management stuff, keep up the good work. Um, but yeah, the, <laughs> I have never found something to go under the desk and hold things like power strips and power, uh, power bricks and, you know, cables that are in a way that is quick and easy to like add another thing to and quickly put back into place. And our cable management product is going to be sick. I've seen the near final geometry now for the power bar holder, and it is just awesome. That's it's cool. so awesome. It's super easy to use. You just pop it into the thing and now your power bar is magnetic. It's awesome it's going to take some time but um when we when we finally bring it to market i think that's going to be the kind of product that doesn't just sell to ltt viewers that's going to be the kind of product that moves really really well just on third-party websites uh like an amazon or whatever the case may be nice building off of that one more uh so i believe it's C, I believe, says, let's go swimming, Tyler. Would LTT store ever have Linus sandals? Yeah, we'd love to. The problem is the cost. 
the molding costs are going to be astronomical because you have to do different molds for every size. So every model times all the different sizes. And it's just this astronomically complicated project that, frankly, how many pairs of sandals are we going to sell? Like if we made the world's greatest sandals, okay? A thousand, ten thousand, probably not a hundred thousand. So I think there's lower hanging fruit for us to focus on. Speaking of I got focusing a, on LTT store, oh yeah, what's up? I got an interesting comment in Flowplane uh, from Kenevex. Are there things in the lab's sphere of influence that you have decided to leave alone or to not bother with due to availability of data elsewhere? And I will add on to this or other potential complications. Uh, no, I don't think so because. There, I wouldn't say that there's a surplus of data in any given category. Like you think TVs, you probably think like artings or ratings is actually what they're called, which I learned only recently when we hired some uh, refugees from there. Um, you know, you think, um, I mean, power supplies used to be Johnny Guru, like now what? Like Gamers Nexus is getting into it, but you think monitors, you think maybe what, like hardware unbox, uh, TFT central, like there's, in any given vertical, there's at best two, maybe three. Okay, TVs. You've also got uh, Vincent Tio from um, HDTV Test, but like that's 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 two. Uh, and there there are a handful more, but I'd say in any given vertical, at most a few, maybe a handful of trusted outlets. So I I, I wouldn't consider that a, a surplus of data in any given category. I think that there's absolutely value to having multiple independent sources of this information so that you can make an informed decision. I, I also threw in there the other potential reasons thing. Cause like one of them that we talked about was security. Yeah. Something like antivirus is one that, you know, I'm looking at going when we are done setting up the lab for all the hardware categories that we'd like to test from every angle that we could possibly want to test them. We could take that entire size of that organization and double it and barely even scratch the surface of testing cybersecurity products. Yeah, we, we had an applicant actually that was like really good and really promising and was interested in security stuff, but it was just like, oh man. What are we gonna do with this? And yeah. the other big challenge with security is that we are a for-profit enterprise. We need to make a return on our investment and nobody f***ing cares unfortunately yeah i find it very interesting but like it's it's rough you try and do any kind of content around cybersecurity software or or privacy or data protection or anything like that there's a couple people there's, out there that make it work but like like you can the tell entire the, audience just goes to sleep you can tell the effort level that goes into it for the amount of return that they get from it is like pretty rough um and I'm, I'm very happy that the people that do make content in that space make it um, and that there's some really good people. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, in other LTT store news, we've actually got a couple of announcements for today. First up, can I just say uh, shout out? Um, oh, is the is the graphic designer slash photographer in Ed's department off probation? No. OK. Well, shout out probationary employee number uh, 625 um, and also Bridget. This uh, Oh, yeah, Andy had a blast with it, too. This was probably the most fun photo shoot that I have ever done for a new I product. actually just sat here and went through all of them because they're, they're so funny. <laughs> uh, this, was, this was an absolute blast. We have swim trunks. They are inspired by like a, uh, a, a, a GPU. <laughs> How did you do that? Is someone just pulling on your shorts? Uh, yeah, Jamie volunteered his tribute <laughs> from logistics. <laughs> uh, That's funny. <laughs> oh, she did a great job of the... <laughs> anyway, sorry. We have a subtle like GPU block uh, water channel yeah. inspired design. Yeah. Uh, zipper pocket in the back. Like I always freaking lose stuff when I'm when I'm swimming. Uh, Socks. We've got pockets in the sides. Uh, it's available in black as well. This is this is great. 
I actually did not know that she was going to do this. There's that is another amazing. one. There's another one further down. Uh, here's here's our probationary uh, software engineer from the lab. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, zippers on the side pockets as well because I hate losing stuff. Sorry, what's that, Luke? We have to be very specific about roles uh, because the engineer is a protected term in Canada. Oh, software developer. Developer. Software developer. developer. Oh. Okay, someone internally told me it didn't matter. Okay, yeah, I'll, well, no, I raised questions about it after the fact. Okay, software developer. I'm pretty sure it does matter. Well, I think it matters if we are selling their services to a third party saying we have engineers working on In it. In Canada, the designation professional engineer and engineer can only be used by licensed engineers and the practice of engineering is protected in law and strictly enforced in all provinces. That seems pretty clear to me, but maybe there's some wiggle room I, with the I services. I actually read that about it more about. than that. It's okay. like if you are representing the work being done as being done by a PNG, uh, then they have to actually have the designation. Okay. Uh, but if you're just like talking internally, he also like might. I honestly don't remember his. Yeah, I I don't remember either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've gone through far too many to remember <laughs> at this point. Anyway, uh, yeah. Our, our very own swim trunks have arrived. Limited quantities available for 2022. So we have a classic black as well as the super fun blue with subtle water block pattern. And then we have another announcement. We have all these colors of cable ties. Some of them don't move so well. So now we have mystery cable ties. 50 per pack, $8.99 US. If you order more than one pack, you may get two or more of the same color combo or you may get completely different ones. But let's face it, you don't care because you ordered mystery cable ties. Good for you. Yeah. Uh, was there anything else that I was supposed to say about the store? So now's a great time to uh, order something, send a merch message, and we'll go through some more of them before the end of the show. Colton will read them out for us. Thanks, Colton. I think there was also one more thing. Oh, yeah, right, right. The last update on the store is that we did our backpack pop-up shop. Mm -hmm. I lied. Um, Luke and I were both there. Yep. Actually, Colton was there too. Yvonne was there. Bridget was there. Nick I didn't was know there. we were saying we weren't going to be there until Wan Show when you said it. So yeah. I was like... Uh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, the reason was that we didn't want it to turn into no, I just like yeah. a meetup yeah. uh, with like a bunch of looky loos. We wanted to keep it really focused on. We didn't really have parking or an event. Yeah, it, it was anything. that. Like, yeah, like it. Yeah. It wouldn't have made sense to be a big meetup. Yeah, it, it didn't make sense. So we wanted to make sure that it was just, it was small and mission accomplished. It was small. We sold about 50 backpacks, which was. About double what I would have said my minimum goal to be successful was. Um, obviously, a few more might have been nice, but that I'm, I'm good with it. Um, and that is enough that sometime in the next few days, we are going to be opening up the floodgates because as far as I'm concerned, once independent verified reviews from actual purchasers of the product are in, and that's what you're looking at here. This is no longer a pre-order. This is now a back order. Um, I am really whew, relieved to see what people are saying about it. Uh, there was no way that we were going to be able to influence in any way what people posted about it. Uh, but so far out of the seven reviews, and these are all people that showed up, there's one four star and six five star reviews that do a great job. Actually, I'm, I'm kind of impressed they do a great job of identifying all the things that we put a ton of work into for this thing and um, and appreciating it as well, which is which is always really nice. It was actually kind of a wild experience because I've never done it before. Being there in person while someone is like looking over, you know, the thing that you spent. You I, know, I had a bit of a feeling because I talked to a few people like, yeah. oh, what do you think about it while they were holding it? And I had a bit of a feeling that they were trying to flatter me a little bit, even though I didn't work on it at all. Yeah. Um, so like I wasn't 100 percent sure, but they seemed everyone seemed pretty happy with it. So I'm I'm happy that the text reviews are coming in also positive. Yeah, because um, we have no influence over that yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. I uh, I was actually talking to Bridget about it because she used to work for uh, a decent sized Canadian clothing retail and I was like, yeah, like as someone on the design side, is this ever an experience you had? She's like, actually, yeah. They would send us uh they would send us to a retail location. I think she said once a quarter. And so you would actually you would actually stand there face to face with a customer 
them not knowing that you were the designer, like the one who worked on this. And they would stand there and go, yeah, I would buy this, except this is like horrible. What kind of idiot would put this here? And Bridget's just like, mm, mm-hmm, yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you for uh, your feedback. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Bridget, no. So, someone, <laughs> in, awful. someone in full plane chat, by the way, asked, why are they not all uh, verified? Um, so we actually set up a different, what is technically a different store. Yeah. Uh, for for the purchases of the backpack because we had a physical location in Canada, so we had to do transactions in in CAD Canadian dollars. Um, so then we we have them coming over here. Some of them are getting their verified tag properly because it's like seeing the accounts are are crossing and blah 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 blah. blah. The the people that don't have a verified tag, um, we're gonna have to reach out to because we don't actually control this we have to reach out to the company that runs the review app that we have and send them proof that it's the same person and then they can add the verified tag for us um but we're not we're not like spoofing verified tags or anything so it's gonna it's gonna take a sec because we're waiting for a few more of the reviews to come in and then the people that don't have the verified tag uh we're gonna send that information over to judge.me which is the thing that we use then they'll approve it and we'll be good it's very important to us that the feedback is real because yeah. the last thing we want is returns on a $250 product. Um, yep. We would much rather not sell it in the first place than take a return on it after selling it. That's not that's not a lot of fun. <laughs> All right. Uh what else we got to talk about today? Is there any more merchy boys? No, I think that's pretty much it for the store today. Uh, Colton, do you have any, do you have a couple of merch messages you want to hit us with and then we'll move on to our next topic? There's nine curated. I do, I do. All right. So Jacob says, been meaning to pick up cable ties for a while. A mystery bag it is. Linus and Luke, what's your pick for a competition game at the LAN? Oh, I want to play Halo Custom Edition for sure. I am like super, super jacked to play Halo CE. I knew you'd say that. Yeah. I don't know how much other people are into this. But I really like games that people don't really play being mm. the competition games. Because I'm I'm not all that interested in like, oh, okay, it's a two what, two hundred and fifty person LAN. Um, I'm not all that interested in like what are the the best players. Yeah, so so there's five people here that play all together on a Counter Strike team four days a week, and we're just gonna watch them crap on everyone else in the entire arena like i that's not super interesting to me sure. um even if i'm one of those people yeah because it's just like oh what it would so my like professional team just gets a pub stomp at some land like okay maybe it's like kind of fun but it's not that engaging so i like having games that just nobody plays which means i don't really want to tell you mm. it's a secret because i don't want you to practice you we've, we've leaked a couple one of the a couple of those on the show um like that um but yeah i don't know i don't know if other people are as interested in that but i like the idea of like okay basically no one has ever played this game let's see who can get the highest score in an hour or something like that. i'm super into that like one of the most fun experiences i ever had at a land party was my first encounter with midtown madness 2 we played cops and robbers a game mode i had never heard of uh the game is super broken so like the physics of be fun like stealing the 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 thing i forget what it is is it like is it money or something i don't know but it's awful it's <laughs> awful half the time the collisions like you'll go flying across the map and it'll be like yeah it didn't transfer ownership of the thing or whatever and that kind of chaos is not fun in a competitive setting no. like when you're at home all sweaty, like, I'm going to win. I want to win. You know, like, that's not fun. But in in a LAN environment where everyone's just, like, you know, had too much Red Bull and, like, has been up for so many hours yeah. they're not really thinking straight anymore, it's like, ah, ha, 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 I missed. Got him. <laughs> you know that's it's yeah, just it such fun. a great environment right and that's that's yeah. what i that's what i want that's what i want you want the you want the land environment to be jovial not like sweaty competitive unless you're at specifically a sweaty competitive land which yeah if it's like a qualifier for yeah. some kind of like regional that's different exactly. but that's not what this is yeah it's, it's it's not that at all not even a little man i mean like 1v1 warcraft 1 like like that, you shouldn't have said it. Well, whatever. I mean, we could still do it. But now people could practice. Now people are going to spend a week practicing yeah. Warcraft 1. Yeah, and then the when we play Warcraft be. 2, then yeah. they're going to be like, oh, crap. Hey. 
<laughs> but yeah, exactly. You just just whip something out that like nobody's expecting. All right. This one comes from Graham. Hi, Lions and Luke. Hope you're doing well today. I was wondering if LMG would make a dedicated workshop channel that would focus on prosumer maker equipment and making things for videos or the lab. No. Cool. Um, I can I can elaborate on that a little bit more. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> maker content is super niche. Um, there are absolutely less niche verticals for us to go after before we would do that. In the very, very long term, I would say it's not impossible. But honestly, I would go for software tips and tricks and tutorials before I would go for maker content. In terms of, okay, like how to fix weird like errors in Windows or like how to how to fix your audio devices in in chat apps or whatever else. Like no 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 no. There is views to be had okay, and software. Okay, okay. Software is a category with so much money to be spent and absolutely nobody who is like a major player in the influencer space. So no, no, no. From a business standpoint, it makes sense. Colton, how many software sponsorships could you sell? A lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, kind of a similar ish question from Luan. Uh, long time viewer, first time caller. Do you ever think about doing a consumer devices channel? You get the occasional vacuum sponsor, and it'd be neat to see unbiased versions of those. Yes, uh, I absolutely think for the same reasons, that's a little bit farther down the line, but I, I think that that's totally something that we would be set up to handle. We've got a lot of new stuff on our plate right now. Yeah, there's just, oh man, there's just so... There's, there's more than enough to do. Yeah, there's so, there's just so much. <laughs> there's just so much. Like creating a benchmark suite for a robo vacuum is like, oh my God. Like you do, Okay, so what? It's probably, honestly, it's probably less work and less investment to just go buy a fucking house versus like trying to build a benchmark house, right? And then, so what? What's your, what's your benchmark? You just have a bunch of dogs that live there. Just, it's like a dog house. So the dogs just like run around. You, you donate. Yeah, they you roam donate around it, the house. You donate it to an then, animal rescue, but yeah. you're like every once in a while, we're going to freak them all out by vacuuming. Yeah. But other than that. Yeah, exactly. Other than that, it's going to be great. So then what you, you do like, uh, you lick the cushions and kind of go, oh, how much hair off of my tongue? <laughs> they get all the hair. Like it's, these are legitimate challenges, right? These are questions we'd have to answer in order to properly uh, quantitatively oh. evaluate these sorts of products. It's non-trivial. So um, given the investment and given how few views categories like that get, <laughs> I would say that that's a sometime later project, not a, not a tomorrow project. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. What else we got here? Question for Luke. I think this has been answered before, but uh, mm. if you... Hold but on. do it better just, this time. Wait, I just lost the message. Wait, one sec, one sec. Wow. This is from Josh. Bell would have done it better. <laughs> yep, he would. I uh, hope you're enjoying vacation, Bell. If Question for Luke. If you haven't gone to NCIX or have met Linus, how different would your life be compared to what it is now? Uh, it's a tough one because I... Linus probably remembers this, but I back in the day and even now to a certain degree but back to, back in the day i always had like a million different things going on because i really liked having fallback plans that was like part of my whole thing i know you were doing like it consulting for like small businesses like even like network wiring up in drop ceilings and stuff and like servers that. and like... stuff for my my it, it was a lot of like little little law firms and notaries and stuff like that yeah. because they have by the way, if you want to get into it, it's a pretty good customer to have because their their like security is extremely important. And if they lose all their data, they're just like done. So they need to have right. really good security. They need to have really good backups. A lot of that comes into like yeah. So it's it's a good customer to have because you can set up a recurring contract. And with they have them. money. And they have money. Um, yeah, one, customers with money. That's key. Customers with money and people that will come back because like if you're trying to start like a little tech company thing just like building computers for a few friends or like fixing your friend's computer every once in a while, whatever is not going to be recurring. You might yeah. get some good jobs at the very beginning, but it's not going to sustain you over time. So I was doing that. Uh, I was in school for software stuff. Um, I, I 
had YouTube aspirations. If you want to see the best video of all time, you can see Linus and I deconstruct uh, my video about a keyboard. Um, that wasn't my only YouTube aspirations. I had other YouTube channels. Um, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea because I had a bunch of other stuff going on. Uh, I was very much in a discovery phase at that time. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And I had school going on as like a kind of guaranteed fallback. There was also potential. I didn't want to. He's really good at it. I'm not necessarily. But there was also potential I could have followed my my dad's path and gotten into plumbing. I would have had a fantastic teacher, considering he is currently a fantastic teacher. Yeah, there we go. Baby Luke, look at him. He's baby Luke. <laughs> dude it's so douchey <laughs> like if you, I, I have this like white undershirt on if i remember correctly and you can see it oh, no. oh i was just gonna say how many buttons do you have undone there uh, yeah too many uh, too um, many all right hold on oh wow oh wow <laughs> that's deep what was i doing my mom's filming this too oh no it's just completely undone. oh that's it's, okay. o- it's just open that's right. okay that's okay sure i mean the it's a little weird still the pretty clear uh the pretty clear like translucent white tank top it's not the i would say the little odd um, a little odd. the most like professional presenter do you remember looks. do you remember flip yeah. hds no oh flip, flip hd oh yeah 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 those awful those awful little cameras that ncix I... sold like a dozen of and i think we based on how quickly they were discontinued must have been one of the most successful resellers of yeah go ahead yeah i didn't buy one just to be yeah, clear yeah. but i borrowed one from a friend and that that was filmed on a flip hd in the kitchen um and was was not a winner i'll uh katara luna so, asks uh, is that a bong in the background knowing no. Luke's mother i'm gonna say no yeah no it's a it's that's a gonna, large vase that's gonna vase, be a hard no yeah Dude. that question is common though there was a bunch of that question under that video or whatever yeah uh, for but sure. yeah no it's not no answer is no all right such a glow up i guess you could call it that yeah are there any collaborations with other creators you haven't done yet that you'd like to do in the future yes what 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 you you want to do a video again like you want us to collab you owe yeah. someone a video i owe someone a, oh yes i owe the spiffing brit yes a t pc yeah. i know i know i know yeah it's been far too long yeah. uh like it's been like over years a year. <laughs> yeah it's been over a year for sure i i owe the spiffing brit a t powered computer uh, I think it'll probably not have actual tea in yeah, the water cooling loop. I think yeah. we would probably go for something more along the lines of like water dyed the color of tea. But maybe we could at least have like a like a, a kettle as the reservoir or something like that, or be... integrated into the loop so it like pours out the top of the kettle into oh, the pretty sweet. into the CPU. We'll come. There's up a with lot something. of things you could do with it. You could also make it look like. There was like a, a thing where you could pour out tea and it looked like it was coming from the water cooling, but it was yeah. actually not or whatever. Like yeah. Or, oh, yeah. the whole system could be in the shape of a teapot. Oh. And then like, like uh, you could have like the uh, the tubing come out the front and like look like it's pouring or something. I don't know. We'll figure We'll figure something out. But yeah. yes, yes, we do need to do a tea cooled computer for the spiffing Brit. Yes. So. Dude, I know. I'm sorry. We 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 will do it at some point. It hasn't been forgotten. It has been brought up a few times kind of here and there, but yeah. still other than not that, yet. the truth is I don't watch a lot of YouTube. I don't follow a lot of creators. I respect the work that creators do because I do it myself and I know that it's not as easy as some people seem to think it is. Um but for me, it's more just like, yeah, you know, you, you reach out and I'm kind of I'm chill. I'm down to I'm down to work with people. I don't really i'm not like a fan of too much because i don't really have time to consume it i'm just busy um so yeah i I wouldn't i wouldn't really say so i guess if like i'm trying to think that's the only one i really thought of just because we said we were like who are my celebrity crushes you know if uh i mean everybody loves tom hanks you know if tom hanks wanted me to build him a computer yeah i'll build you a computer tommy like no problem sure but i don't know there's you don't even look into the collaborations that you do do. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Next. <laughs> All right. This yeah. one comes from Adam. Hey, Linus. I'm going to see the Backstreet Boys Tuesday night with my wife. Her and my first time seeing them live. Did you ever get a chance to see the Backstreet Boys live like you wanted to? Nope. Twice. 
twice I'm twice the Vancouver Backstreet Boys date aligned with my own convention that I had to be at. Twice I had to cancel tickets I had already bought. I thought it was only once. No, it was twice. Oh my Colton. gosh. Two times they Sorry. were touring. The two times they were in Vancouver on the same fing day as LTX. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, I'd to yeah, I'd totally do Ryan Reynolds. I mean, build him a computer. And the other thing. Maybe both. <laughs> yeah, that was chat chat's idea. Chat's idea was Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, for sure. For sure. No problem. Charlie Sheen, that's a little more controversial, Prattable. <laughs> uh, he hasn't been in the news recently. I don't know if he's like still Pow controversial. Powdered water cooling. Uh, guess, do you guys want any more? Yeah, yeah. Hit me with one more. All right. We'll this one comes topic. from Ashley. In the recent video about the Intel Arc series, it was mentioned that it performs well in DX12 and Vulkan. Yes. Since Wine and Proton run Windows games through Vulkan, yes, I knew this was do coming. you believe this card is a good value for Linux users? Thanks. Uh, okay. I don't know. That's the kind of thing that I feel like Anthony is going to have to be given to... a week to yeah. go and deep dive on because DXVK... Yes, translates older versions of DirectX into Vulkan. And the really hilarious thing is that my understanding is DXVK either works or is like on the verge of working on Windows. So running through this like not emulation, but translation layer could actually be a more efficient way to game than using like DirectX 9 <laughs> or DirectX 10 directly. <laughs> that was a weird sentence. I don't know the answer to that, and that's not the kind of thing that we were going to be able to test in a very early preview, like what we were able to do with Shroud and Tap last week. But yeah, I'm I'm into it. It sounds super cool. I just don't know the answer, so I'm sorry. All right, why don't we jump into another? To oh my god, I'm signed out of. Another okay, Luke, topic? pick a topic. You need a topic? Do we have topics left? Sponsors. Oh. Okay, well I guess Luke's doing sponsors for a change. Sure. Uh, ba -dum -bum, ba -dum -bum, boom. Can you do the thing? Do you know how to do it? I'm going to throw Corsair up. There we go. Thanks to Corsair for sponsoring this video. If you're looking for a new headset, check out Corsair's HS65 Surround Wired Gaming Headset, featuring high quality, custom tuned 50 millimeter Neo. Neodymium or neodymium? Neodymium. Neodymium audio drivers to deliver excellent sound with the range you need to hear everything on the battlefield. Because I work from home now, I don't hear words anymore. I just read them. <laughs> <laughs> And communicate to your teammates with terrific clarity thanks to the omnidirectional microphone with flip to mute function. The, the headset is made from premium materials for long lasting comfort, reinforced with metal construction and details for a quality look and feel while weighing in at only 282 grams. Learn more about the Corsair HS65 surround in the link below. Now tell me something, Luke. Do you think you would hear people's voices a little bit more often if you picked up your phone once in a while? When was the last time I missed a phone fired. call? <laughs> Actually, you usually pick up when I call. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The show is also brought to you by Zoho Desk. If you run a business, you know just how important customer service is to retaining clients. And Zoho Desk is a context-aware help desk to keep your customers happy while your company keeps doing what it does best. What does context-aware mean? I'm glad you asked. Zoho Desk's AI assistant, Zia, will help you quickly see your customer sentiments at a glance, whether from online chats, phone calls, emails, or elsewhere, and help keep your processes fluid with easy automation options and the ability to pull up sales or product information with Zoho Desk's built-in document library. That's not a feature of Zia, that's just a feature in general. Plus, your agents will have access to tons of different dashboards so they can keep track of metrics like ticket traffic and happiness ratings. So find out why 50,000 businesses worldwide trust Zoho Desk for their help desk needs and save 50% with code ZDesk50 using the link down below. Finally, the show is brought to you by Polyarc. Hey, welcome new sponsor. What is this? Moss. Um. Oh, yes. Good. Wonderful. Yep. Polyarc. Good. New sponsor. This isn't an awkward start at all. <laughs> After a successful award-winning launch on PlayStation VR earlier this year, Moss Book 2, a VR game that is worth checking out, is now available on the MetaQuest 2. It lifts, it lifts off. The story picks up where it left off in the platinum-selling Moss Book 1 video game, why do you have to specify it's a video game? You know, this is this is really... You know what? Let's start over, Polyarch. <laughs> Thanks to Polyarch for sponsoring the show. Hey, Colton. <laughs> Colton, make sure you send them the right timestamp here, all right? After a... <laughs> and then he pauses again. 
You got this. Okay. 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 Here's what we're going to do. Colton, hold Colton, get that lower third out of here. Get that lower third out of here. Give me a couple merch messages, okay? <laughs> Let's just get a gap here. We're going to bury this in the two hour long land show and hope they weren't watching live. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not ready. He's ready. He's got this. Uh, He's got this. All right. All right. This one comes from Anonymous. In the years you've been hosting the WAN show, are there any topics that stand out in your memory as the most interesting or the most infuriating? Uh, oh. I mean, I don't know. Team viewer calling me all the time and, and you know, messaging me is pretty, pretty infuriating. Uh, I'd say that NVIDIA's treatment of hardware unboxed was very infuriating. That was infuriating and disappointing. Um, I got really into discussing, like... Anytime we talk about potential consumer like enthusiast use cases for virtualization, I get kind of excited yeah. and into it. Yeah. Like the first time I thought of like, whoa, you could use this server technology to have like a single computer in your house that powers all your thin clients and you could slice up the compute power as needed. So if you needed like gaming here and homework there, it could be dynamically allocated. And and that stuff has come to pass, not in the way that I envisioned it, but in like a, you know, scalable business, like sensible way. So, you know, services like GeForce Now or Stadia or whatever else the case may be. Um, so I'd say that's pretty exciting, but no, I don't know if there's like a specific time that stands out to me you guys got to understand there are literally like are we are we over a thousand hours of wan show that exists like i i think at, at least yeah it's got it's got to be it's, it's got to be up there i yeah. mean uh, i don't think either you or i have missed a wan show in the last two years so that's like been a long time times a hundred times an hour and a half like that's a that's a solid probably couple hundred hours right there i topics that stand out to me i remember the the oculus one was it I don't think it was when, no, I th yeah, when Facebook bought Oculus, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. WAN show. Yeah, you were not impressed. No, and I wrote like a huge thing for it. Um, that that was that uh, that was very memorable. And then I think uh, this is I'm I'm not gonna do uh, ones that like bothered me. I don't remember the exact word that they used, but um, the other one that I remember talking about a lot was like we had this. I feel like it was a recurring topic. But it was this idea of like having like robot wars on a football field. I think we Do only talked about it once. Oh, okay. But like, man, video games IRL. Yeah. Whole. Yeah. So where you're, you're basically bringing together FPV drone technology yeah. and augmented reality, and like you essentially the stakes would be so high. It's like it'd be like paintball, but for like flight video games. Because if you get hit by someone you'd have you'd have logic in these combat drones that would be like yeah you're that sorry that engine is disabled or well it'd be a motor but that motor is disabled now good luck limping to the ground see you later so you could actually fall out of the sky and lose like a hundred dollars worth of damage to your drone like it's the kind of thing that you i, I mean what like maybe in dubai you know you could create yeah. a an arena yeah. for this and actually yeah. get get participants for it or something like that, but it couldn't possibly yeah. exist. So once at Rocket uh, League elsewhere. IRL, this was this was pre Rocket League. Yeah, this is, this is ages. This ago. was a long back in the garage. Yeah. Back in the garage. Yeah. Here in my garage with my knowledge. <laughs> One more really important question. This one's from Ethan. Linus, what's your favorite type of cheese? Mm. Oh. I'm gonna be honest with you. The best experiences I've had with, or I've ever had with cheese, was when I was in Paris uh, with my mother. She took me there as a graduation present. Oh, my time in Paris. Yeah, and uh, so we went for a couple of weeks. It was it was pretty awesome. A week? I don't know. It was some period of time, and I was there with my mother, so that was good. Uh, no, to be clear, I'm very close with my mother. Um, and what we would do was we would just go get some baguette. And we would go into a fromagerie and get some a cheese, uh, excuse me, fromage. And we just, we wouldn't know what anything was. So we would just get like half, a, fun. half a dozen random ones. I have no idea what I ate, um, but I would take the cheese and I would put it on the baguette and then I would le eat and it was delicious. And nothing else like here has compared, but I also don't go out of my way to buy fancy cheese here because we don't have fromageries. Um, so yeah, it was it was it was great. 
Yeah, it was awesome. Hmm. Yeah, en, en, en France. <laughs> uh, all right. The show is brought to you by Polyarch. After a successful award-winning launch on PlayStation VR earlier this year, Moss Book 2 is definitely worth checking out and is now available on the MetaQuest 2. The Moss Book 2 story picks up where it left off in the platinum-selling Moss Book 1, and the Quest 2 version includes optimizations for all aspects of the game across graphics and gameplay. Thanks to the two-controller setup of the Quest 2, you will feel a deeper and more natural sense of immersion. And in the game, you not only help guide Quill in an epic adventure to save the world, you can reach into the world to manipulate the environment, help fight enemies, and solve challenging puzzles. It's easy to get lost in the world of Moss Book 2 with its gorgeous art style, high-quality sound, and animation polish that separates it from other VR games. So don't wait. Immerse yourself in a great VR adventure in the enhanced version of Moss Book 2, now available on the MetaQuest 2 VR headset. Thank you very much, Polyarch, for sponsoring the show today. This is definitely the only version of this read that I've done. Don't bother looking for any others. I'll also throw out there, there's, there's announcement trailers and stuff, and it actually looks really cool. So, All right. Uh, here's some interesting news. Hive set out, uh, this is a smart home, smart home maker. Hive set out to fight climate change um, through the production of more e-waste, which is a novel strategy. Um... Here's the here's the message. This was posted on Twitter by oh, who, who are you? Sorry, <laughs> thank you for that. Putting our energy into what matters most. Hi Phil. It's not easy saying goodbye to products our customers love, but as a smart tech brand in the middle of a climate crisis, we know our focus needs to change. At Hive, we've got big plans to make Britain's homes greener. So we've made the tough decision to discontinue our smart security and leak detection products and develop more smart home tech that'll get us closer to net zero. Wow. Thanks, Hive. What? It's a truly courageous move. Can you imagine? Like, to be clear. Okay, there's... EO Welling... <laughs> yeah, there, There's some allegations in the, in the comments on here which are interesting to me. Uh, there, there's a note that says... In communication to customers, Hive claims to be a brand in the middle of a climate crisis that needs to change their focus by bricking discontinued cameras. Are they actually doing that? Uh, Are they yeah, bricking their devices? Down, shutting, they're shutting down the servers, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is... I mean, it's one thing to EOL a product, right? Um, to stop supporting something, to shut to down stop servers. Or to stop selling it, but still support it. Or, or, no, I'm saying it's one thing to stop supporting it. Sure. It's okay. entirely another to claim that you are discontinuing support For... <laughs> in the name of fighting climate change. Yeah. That is not what happened, Hive. What happened was you didn't want to support it because it cost money. And so you stopped. Don't turn this into some kind of like white knight, like like Greenpeace like message here that you're 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 protecting the world. What are you even talking about? Who do you think you are, what Apple? A weird move. We stopped including chargers because well, we just love the Earth so darn much. No, no, that's not why you stopped including chargers. That's a happy, coincidental, accidental benefit, maybe. Maybe, but that's not why you did it. So wacky. Bloody hell. That's such a weird move. Like, did did, did a, literally a single person take that the way they had hoped? I don't know. Yeah, I really, I really don't know. Very odd. Uh, what is this? All right. Um... Wow, is that? Oh, no, we've got another really great topic. This is cool. Lewis Rossman and Aaron Wolf want your ideas to help get Pretty people cool back control of their own devices. Uh, so there's a couple of sources here. There's uh, fudo.org slash grants. And we'll get into a little bit more detail about this totally legitimate looking website later. I, it is, it is legitimate. Rossman assures me it's legitimate. Otherwise, I actually would not be uh, promoting it. Uh, but Lewis asked us to get the word out about the man and organization that quote 
kicked me in the ass to start a nonprofit. Uh, that nonprofit being the Repair Preservation Group, or RPG, which has been instrumental in furthering right to repair legislation thanks to financial grants from Aaron Wolf, uh, founder and leader of FUTO. FUTO's goal is to give no strings attached financial grants to high quality projects that are focused on tech freedom like they did for Rossman. So Wolf cold called Rossman in 2020. Rossman hung up on him <laughs> in typical Rossman fashion. I was going to say, <laughs> sakes, Lewis. <sighs> Oh, that's why great. you gotta be prickly like that, man? I mean, like I love you, but come on. Anyway, hung up on him, thinking it was a scam because, and I quote, "Who the f randomly calls my store saying I want to give you no strings attached to your money?" That's fair. Which is fair. That's fair. Which is fair. We gotta give him credit where credit's due. A wolf called back and ended up giving Rossman a small loan of a million dollars. Sorry, excuse me, Grant to start RPG helped him hire an attorney, and walked him through the process. So in two years, uh, Rossman says, he has not once second-guessed or even asked what I did with any of the million dollars he gave. All he asked is that I do not sell out and keep doing what I'm doing. So Rossman basically Sick. reached out to me to help get the word out because he doesn't want anybody else to hang up uh, <laughs> when they get a call. <laughs> Fair enough. And, I mean, based on the, st based on the state of this Grant's website, like... Oh, this looks like it's straight out of 1998. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I, 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 would, I would think it was kind of fishy as well. So I wanted when, to defend it until I went to the homepage and I saw that there's like effectively no padding between the words and anything. In, oh, are the you top on it right now? Yeah. yeah. There's just like the text just goes like right wow. into the. Gorgeous. Definitely looks like a website created by someone who just like hands out million dollar grants casually. Um, which is fine. You know, you want to put the money where it's going to be most effective. Yeah, uh, honestly, yeah. A gorgeous, gorgeous website is not not the answer to that. So cool. Um, Fudo is asking, uh, Fudo is asking similar projects to apply at fudo.org slash grants with three basic requirements. One is to be open source or have a roadmap to becoming open source. Two is to not have an exploitative business model. So no data mining, selling user data, etc. And number three is that you do not sell out to the tech oligopoly when they come a knocking, which seems reasonable enough on the surface, but guys is probably harder than you might think to resist when that kind of bag of money shows up. Um, one other example of the type of projects that Fudo is looking for is the privacy-focused Android fork Graphene OS. Its makers are currently in funding talks with Fudo, which hopefully I'm allowed to disclose. Well, that's in here. And Rossman will apparently be putting together a makerspace with Wolf near University of Austin over the next year. A little more about Aaron Wolf, 18-year uh, Silicon Valley veteran, founded Yahoo Games in the 1990s, had success as an entrepreneur and investor, notably as a seed funder, and early contributor to WhatsApp. Today, though, huh. I wonder if there's any bitterness in that whole do not sell out to big tech with the whole WhatsApp thing. Yeah. Today, though, Fudo, through Fudo, Aaron is devoted to using his fortune and talents to give people back control over their computers and sovereignty over their technology. Cool. Um, discussion question here, uh, courtesy of Riley Murdoch, says, more rich people using money to fight tech monopolies, please, K, thanks. I mean, yeah, I guess that's that's basically it. So we're happy to... We're happy to help spread the word. Uh, if you guys have a project, hey, head over to futo.org slash grants. I assure you it is not as illegitimate and sketchy as it looks, which is great because... It's probably also just like very new. Well, I mean, um, called Rossman in 2020, so... The site, though? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I could look into it, but I, I, yeah, I honestly don't, on, don't really like, care too much. But yeah, uh, web archive. But. Yeah, it, it, if it's legit, it's legit. That's it. Whatever. Yeah. Sounds good. Uh, on this is an info page. Like, I don't know. Who cares? Oh, crap. We haven't even talked about whale land tickets. I was going to say or on the, the subject robot of dogs. things that are not legit. Yeah, the, the robot, robot dogs. dogs. You were saying you thought it was like fake or something? I saw some posts about that, but maybe it was about a different video. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll talk about it. But whale land tickets first? Oh, no, we're doing this. Okay, yeah. Uh, a robot dog similar to Boston Dynamics Spot was demoed with an assault rifle just kind of thrown on top of it um there there the video went uh pretty viral i think got a lot of views it was it was kind of everywhere for a while you can see it it's it's very spot like it's it's running through some type of patrol script there you can see it does have some issues with recoil um that could be 
fixed pretty easily if you just didn't put like a pyramid that you strapped a gun to on top of a yeah. robot dog that was built for other things um and there are companies that have made ones that do look more legit i just don't think we've actually seen videos of them being yeah. used but that doesn't mean that they don't exist um it looks like the technology dog that was used in the video is sold on aliexpress for about three grand um yeah um it looks like it's very likely of of uh th there's some suggestions that it might be of russian origin because there was a, an insignia on the on the robot dog that yeah, looked like it was linked there. to something every single thing that links it to that origin could be done and put there by yeah. basically anyone so it means basically nothing um but yeah i don't know just throwing it like on top with duct tape is not the most elegant solution and i guarantee you that there are people making more elegant solutions that are better at recoil control and probably don't just use a, a firearm that was made for a human yeah taped on top of a dog yeah they use a firearm that was made for the dog properly attached to the dog so uh jaden saying hey not this please yeah <laughs> it's happening regardless but yeah it's spooky it's just uh, I don't think that necessarily the one in the video is the one that you should be. Yeah, the one in the video is like, relatively speaking, not a problem. Um, but there are ones that already exist that are much scarier. Yeah, so. uh, Alex actually added a note to this. Uh, Nicholas uh, Plouffe was the one who who prepped it. But he says, IMO, this is way less terrifying than a drone strike. Uh, this thing is super loud and I can outrun it by going downstairs like it's... I mean, you can't outrun a bullet, but I, I get his point either drone, way. Drone strikes are, are spooky. Yeah. This, we're getting outside of our realm here pretty quickly. But, like, yeah, it's uh, it's a thing. Just if if that video was, was spooky, just understand that that's pretty base level. Discussion question is, in about 100 years, we've gone from riding horses into battle to drone strikes from a pilot hundreds or thousands of kilometers away. Uh, what's next for modern warfare? I mean, I think that the answer is... Uh, you know, it's it's all basically information. It's all subterfuge. It's all manipulation of public sentiment. You can cause so much more damage to a country by weaponizing its own population than by actually just and like destabilizing yeah, it. Yeah, by riding up in like a tank. I mean, to be clear, tanks have their place, but it's um, it's kind of like an after the fact roll in and and seize territory type of situation where you've already kind of ruined that territory through the other means. Um, also, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to give people ideas, so <laughs> I'm not going to talk about other things related to this. Yeah, Luke has some good ideas. <laughs> so, it is something we talk about, but I don't think it's going to be on the WAN show. No. Uh, speaking of things that there was some debate internally as to whether to talk about on the WAN show, I... You know, I don't know how to address something like this in the right way because there just isn't a right way to address something like this. But it's possible that online there will surface an email. It seems to be being sent to our partners, to our business associates, like other media outlets. It was copied to as many members of our staff as this individual was able to guess at. And it contained some very uh, serious allegations about me. So rather than wait for this to pop up on Reddit and, um, you know, to have people make assumptions, I felt, you know, it's better for me to just tell you guys um, what my take on it is and we can go from there. So the email alleged that when I was 16 to 17, and this is from the alleged father of... Uh, a daughter, alleged that I raped a 12-year-old girl. So that's pretty, uh, that's pretty heavy. Um, <laughs> to that, I would say that's completely untrue. And I sincerely doubt that this email contains any truth whatsoever. Um, yeah, if there's any, if there's any um, wait, who, who wrote this? No, I'm not, that's, that's not, no, that's not a thing. Uh, so anyway, I will, I will show you guys what I said about that internally because the basic bottom line of this is I have no idea, no idea what uh, this particular person is talking about. So let's go ahead 
I said, hey everyone, by now you've probably either seen or heard about the explosive allegations that were blasted out to most of the company via email. The only way I know how to respond to something like this is with full transparency. So for better or for worse, here is my entire relationship slash sexual history. I had my first kiss in the summer when I was 14 at an acquaintance's birthday party. She tasted of cigarette smoke, but it was otherwise enjoyable. I started my first relationship when I was 15 uh, with a girl I met at Bible camp. I have redacted the name. Our relationship lasted about six months, and while we kissed, hugged, touched, we never had sex. We were the same age. I lost my virginity at 16 with my then-girlfriend and high school sweetheart, name redacted, Mm, might have been 17. Either way, our relationship lasted until I was 19. We were entirely monogamous. We were the same age. I met Yvonne in my first semester at UBC. We started dating in January of that year. That is it. So, you know, whatever whatever people might think, one way or the other, you know, is uh, is is two sexual partners enough for a for a man? Um, that's it. That's that's my that's my that's how many notches are in my belt. Not only do I have no idea what this person is talking about, I can't even figure out who the supposed dad is talking about. Because in my life at that time, there were no people who matched the description that was provided. The daughter of an immigrant family, four to five years younger than me, that is literally no one. Um, so the discussion question here is, as a public figure, this is something that I've been aware of as an attack vector for a long time. I mean, forever, yeah. Um, and it's something I thought about, but it wasn't until now that I finally went, okay, so what do I, what on earth am I supposed to do in this situation? Uh, either you acknowledge it right away, which is clearly, clearly the path that I've settled on, um, but this has the potential to make me look defensive. Even worse, if I, you know, go aggro on it. You know, I pull out the, this is libel and I intend to defend, protect my rights, blah, blah, blah. Well, that has the unintended consequence of potentially silencing legitimate victims of sexual assault or sexual abuse. That is absolutely the last thing, the last thing I want. So I want to make it really clear that in acknowledging it, I am, I am not, I'm not saying that this, that this alleged supposed daughter is lying. Uh, because she doesn't exist. So it would be the supposed father of this supposed daughter that would be lying in this case. Because um, just, yeah, I have, no, I, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, option two would be to ignore it. This has the potential to make it seem like I have something to hide or I'm trying to sweep something under the rug. So clearly I decided not to take that path. Um, I think this person is probably getting at least part of what they wanted by hearing me talk about it on the WAN show. Um, I have to deal with that. That's that's the unintended consequence of even acknowledging this kind of this kind of an attack. But the reason that I chose the path that I did, which is full disclosure, is that what it does is make it so that this is the last time that I ever have to acknowledge anything like this. You guys now know my entire everything there is to tell so that's it that's all sorry i'm i'm not spicy um very mild very pretty, mild flavor pretty boring guy actually um it's kind of i was kind of an awkward i was kind of an awkward teen when it came to girls actually <laughs> so, yeah EJ Tech on float plane says, not sure what's more insane. The defamatory email blast or Linus sharing that timeline for the entire internet to see. Yeah, I'm not sure either. I just don't know what else to do, guys. It's a weird situation to be in. Yeah. You gotta ask yourself, like, what what would you do in this situation if you had uh a company of people that are that are reading this and then looking at you, and if you had a, a community of people that are watching your videos and potentially going to hear about it because the email blast went out to a wide range of people um you want to get out ahead of it yeah but like how do you do that you know i'd love to know what motivated it but it's really tough because if there was if there was a grain of truth that i could build on then at least i could go okay maybe it's that particular grudge 
over that particular thing I said in a video or or that that perceived slight against that that person that or or and and you know the the truth is that I have not always been the nicest person in the world. I've talked about it on the WAN show before. Like I was pretty mean in high school. Um I have I have buried any hatchets that I had as an adult. That's something that I I set out for myself to do. Um, so I I don't think this is someone actually out of my past coming coming out of nowhere. I think this is just a I think it's a random. fairly obvious attack vector. Yeah. Um. So so yeah. What I'm what I, but what I was saying was if there was some kind of if there was some kind of kernel or nugget of truth in this that I could build on, like if if it at least matched the description of of someone who I had offended it or or wronged in some way, then I might be able to I, I might be able to figure out what on earth is going on but there just there just isn't there there's nobody in my life past or present who matches that description so the email is also very clear that there wasn't going to be any information given um yeah yeah and there the, was no there was no trails to follow like yeah um so i think i've said everything that i have to say about that and I think it's time for us to do some merch messages. Let's do it. All right, this one comes from Julian. Are there plans for add-ons to the backpack similar to the Moss Organizer Nest or packing cubes that are appropriately sized for the LTT backpack? Packing cubes? Sorry, uh, packing cubes. What Moss I... Organizer Nest, you said? Yeah. I think sorry. we've... I've seen these before, right? Moss Organizer oh, yeah. Nest. We okay, I'm looking to sponsor, sponsor the WAN show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. add-ons. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we do have some add-ons planned. Um, For the webbing on the front, I think we want to do a phone holder, which I've already had requests in person for now at the pop-up shop. So, yes, we intend to do something like that. And I think we are also planning an internal, like, tech pouch. Uh, it's really funny. The, the, the genesis of that product was Bridget showing me something that she had kind of gone rogue and had a sample created for and I, I i looked at it the first thing i said i was like sorry what is this a like a purse is this a tech purse and she goes no it's not supposed to be that shape they sewed it wrong i'm like oh okay it's supposed to be more like a jumbo pencil case and then it unzips and like kind of accordions out um and man the latest prototype really good not ready yet uh yes yes stuff will happen What else you got? All right. This one comes from Alexandro. Uh, yes. They ask, will, oh my gosh, hold on one sec. <laughs> will you make more mats and will you test tempered glass testing from computer cases? So I'm assuming that's referring to the lab. Will we do tempered glass testing? More mats, like more desk pads? Yes, there are more designs coming soon. And will we test tempered glass from computer cases like for like shatter resistance or no i'm gonna say i'm gonna say no i mean that's a really cool rabbit hole to get down like the the optical transparency of different manufacturers like side panel glass like who has a great you know anti-glare coating that makes it so you can see your internal components but i, I mean yeah sure cool if you want to start <laughs> case panel glass reviews.com you go do that power to hit you. it up yeah, I I love it, but um, no, no, that is not a vertical that we plan to pursue at this time. All right, this one comes from Kyle. Gamers Nexus took a chance investing in a sound isolation chamber and fan testing while LTT is taking a chance with labs. These moves prove your passion to the trade and are critical to the viewer base trust relationship. Thank you. Any, pl any plans to collab more often with the new equipment? Hmm. I don't think the new equipment necessarily makes collabing easier. There aren't a ton of tech creators like in BC, so a lot yeah. of people would have to like f like change countries to come check out the lab. The lab stuff is not very portable. I think um, other than referring to each other, which we do, and respecting each other and and supporting each other, yeah, they're awesome in public. Yeah, those guys are great. Um, Super legit. I yeah, I, I I think that I think that some friendly competition in the space would also be great. I think that we have the potential to push each other to be better. Um, you know, no, I mean, I, I'm, oh, I mean, one, one collab that I have, I have a verbal 
agreement from Steve from Gamers Nexus 4 is uh, he says that once their place is totally set up, I get to do a tour of it. I get to make a video like nice. doing like my spin on the Gamers Nexus lab. And he's more than welcome to come and check out our space and do some Gamers Nexus coverage. Tell me if he thinks my team did a good job of building out our testing facility. So I, I think that would be that would be really fun. But yeah, no, other than that, not really. All right, this one comes from Matthew. Matthew asks, will the display cable testing shown previously in videos be incorporated into LTT Labs? Yes. Well. And it'll also be a critical part of the development of our upcoming cables, which I know puts us in a pretty awkward position, conflict of interest-wise, but if we just maintain our complete transparency, then... I think we should be fine. That's something that you could you could maybe send it to other people to test. Yeah, for sure. And we will. My understanding is that other YouTubers have already expressed interest to their communities in reviewing our screwdriver and backpack, which we would be more than happy to facilitate. So if there's anyone who you know who you want to review those products, let them know. Send them this clip. Um, assuming they have a sizable audience, I'm sorry if you have four subscribers on YouTube, it's not like, I'm not knocking you, I don't want to go full artesian builds here, you're not big enough to send you a screwdriver, no, no, it's not, it's not about that, this is not a prize, it's, not, it's if you are legitimately a reviewer slash influencer in that vertical, then we'd be happy to at least explore sending you one, or at the very least, I know that some have said they do not want review samples, they would rather just buy it, um, we could give, we could give you a like at that moment, heads up so that in the first wave, you'll be one of the first to receive your order. So we could at least do that. Um, yeah, just let us know how you want to work it. All right. We got a merch message from Anonymous for me. Wait hey, a minute. Let's go. Thanks, Colton, for jumping in for the WAN show. Did you send this yourself? No, Thanks, no. Thanks, Colton, hey, for jumping no, in for the WAN Anonymous, show. Anonymous, Anonymous, you. Anonymous Colton. <laughs> Question for Colton. What is the best and worst parts of your work day? You know, the best parts are getting to work with all these fine folks, uh -huh. okay? <laughs> Just showing up. Why don't you kiss some more ass, Colton? Oh, wow. Anyways, I just like working here. I'm sorry. <laughs> The worst part of my day Guy. is dealing with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, I'm joking. I don't know. That's a good one. That's a good one. All right. I think that's all the questions I have. Yeah, I uh, appreciate you. I appreciate you. Um, Edmund says, hey, Li Luke and Linus, love the show today. What's a game franchise that you recommend to people? A franchise. I mean, I'm super into, you know, I love my Beat Saber. Love Anno. Depends so much what you're into. Yeah, it's not for everyone. Yeah. Also, franchise is like kind of specific because a lot of my favorite games are not a part of a franchise. Mm. Um, yeah. I, don't know. I can't think of a franchise that isn't like super generic and you've probably already played it. Um, so I don't really have an answer. Sorry. Franchise. Yeah, I don't know. Depends too much on what you're specifically into. Sorry. As always, it yeah. depends what you're into. And I think that pretty much wraps us up for WAN Show today. We will see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Oh, what do I do with that? Sorry. I lost track of time and I'm going to be late. So I cut it. Larian Studios. Divinity? Yeah. But then, like, I wouldn't necessarily recommend Super High playing the old ones. You should just play the new ones. You should check out Baldur's Gate, which is coming out. It looks amazing. You should play Divinity Original Sin 2. There you go.